The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod the ruler had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened, was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. It's really interesting uh, how we, we go from Christmas straight into like, well, Jesus being disobedient last week with his parents in some senses. Uh, but we, you know, we hear the revelation of him saying, hey, I'm in my dad's church and I'm growing. I'm growing with his word. And now today, uh, we're basically uh, have a little a snippet here of Jesus's ordination. He has consecrated the beginning of his ministry, and God is saying that uh, he is well pleased, the voice of God. Um, what I love about these scriptures is to think about uh, being baptized by the Holy Spirit, being consecrated by the fires, the fires. <laughs> Sometimes we can say, uh, we can think of that in a negative way, well, you know, baptism by fire, <laughs> kind of uh, that not knowing where that first step is and having a little anxiety. But then anxiety, those things that are weaknesses of the self, that's really what uh, are a part of that old nature that Paul is talking about in Romans that we need to put, we need to put down. Though we think, you know, hi, we can't. We're both simultaneously saint and sinner. You know, we're always going to have some little, some little discrepancy on our little pathway to life. And that is true. But even being aware of it, that, you know, I want to be refreshed by the burning fires of God's love in my heart so I can be ready to serve, so I can be ready to do whatever I am doing every day. You know, I, um, I saw a wonderful film last night. It's a very funny comedy. Ever heard of the film Nacho Libre? Uh, Jack Black? Oh, my gosh. I, um, I thought I was going to faint. There were some parts that were just so funny in it. But what I loved about it is his underdog character. This man was sort of like kind of considered a failure as a monk. All the other monks were like, you know. You, you're terrible as a cook, you don't do this right, you know, and he, 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 and he was trying, he was very earnest. And, um, <laughs> and the, one of the figures that he eventually made friends with was this little skinny man who beat him up and took all of his chips and, you know, because he was gathering food to feed the orphans that he had, that they had at this um, monastery. <laughs> and, um, you know, he was not, he had to train himself not to keep getting beaten up because his food was getting stolen. But as a little boy, he thought about wrestling. And then I guess wrestling in Mexico, they like to dress in costume and stuff and uh, lots of funny scenes. But uh, doing a spoiler alert with that film, what I loved about the ending, because they, you know, they, they kicked him out of the monastery when they found out he was um, you know, basically uh, um, doing this fly-by-night wrestling to get food for the monastery. 
he, though he did give them all of his proceeds and he uh, bought a bus for the children to take tours. And so he still served, he still served there and they started to see and appreciate his gifts. Though that nun coming to believe in him and sitting in the audience and, you know, at first she was totally against him doing that when she found that out, was a little spark of confidence. We're told not to, in the Bible it says, we're told not to really trust people. Which, that sounds really ugly. But, you know, what we're really told to do is not only trust in God, but we're really to have faith and confidence in other people. And that, that's sort of what remembering and thinking about our lives journey, our lives ministry, whatever we're doing, is to, to refuel us and to have us in, live into uh, the new nature that is there within our hearts, that is within our hearts. No matter what you're doing, you're always, you know, sometimes you're going to feel like uh, Groucho Marx. I don't want to belong to a club that's going to have me as a member. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, that, and that it's very true in ministry. It's hard. Ministry is not easy. There ain't no easy button. And I know my friend hates when I say that easy button thing, but I know that was the best invention they had for uh, staples. They had just hit this easy button and everything magically gets done. Well, you know, life doesn't work that way, and uh, being, doing ministry, sharing yourself is not an easy thing, because it challenges you. It challenges you in all different kinds of ways. Now, if you're an introverted person, you know, it's not necessarily uh, going to be an easy thing for you to speak in front of a whole bunch of people, or, uh, you know, but you grow. And what we see interesting here is that John knew he was a messenger. He was an Old Testament messenger that pointed to Christ. And he, he was really speaking about, you better make the journey with your heart. You better start working on turning your heart to God. And it isn't that turning the heart to God that like, well, I do these nice little warm fuzzy things that make me feel better. You're, you know, put me on any kind of a pedestal. That's not what he was talking to. And, and here, Jesus comes to him and wants to be baptized by him. And he is sinless. Jesus is sinless. Jesus is perfect. But he was showing John and he was showing everybody there, look how much God loves us. And here I am, I know what my whole journey is going to be. It's going to be that slow journey to the cross. But it's also going to be to that resurrection, that glory of the resurrection. But for him to even just do that and allow John to baptize him and allow people to see, it helps us to think about that, that how we receive uh, how we reflect, how we confess, how we repent and we renew. That incorporation, that incorporation that the beautiful Holy Spirit of God churns, churns the way the, the chef blows out the dust, uh, helps to burn away the sin within us and make us a new person each day. Um, I was recently uh, been hunting down old Jesus movement music, and I was blessed to buy um, an album by Keith Green, who uh, tragically uh, died um, in 1982 with his two young children in a plane, a small plane crash. And I mean, that man was so devoted in his music, and you hear the passion in his music, and um, one of the songs that maybe I should have made as a prelude or a postlude for day was um, Rushing Wind. This, the rushing winds of God 
Use me, Lord. Shape me. Renew my soul for all that you need me to do. And we can only imagine uh, for the people standing around who just even were baptized by John, seeing Jesus in the midst of prayer and then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's voice, the dove comes down and says, I am pleased. I am pleased with you. We do have a little voice within us. And as I, I love that one little cartoon, uh, you know, well, the one that we listen to too much sometimes is the little devil, you know or the little Beelzebub. But the other one is that new nature, and that is Christ. And they do fight. They do fight for us. But we're the ones that need to do the work. We're the ones that need to, to be underdogs. I'm being an underdog in my journey. I never thought I'd be here. They did a 10-year reflection thing on social media, and then you see yourself, well, 10 years ago, I was at the beginning of my journey. I was um, a vicar for a church plant. And you never, never thought you'd be where you are today, but then you're blessed by everything that you do. You're blessed, and you learn from everything that you're challenged with. Like, I know it's, it's uh, very hard here right now with uh, help being so low, and you're kind of wearing many hats. <laughs> so it's kind of a, something you didn't necessarily uh, or think you were going to be in or uh, involved in, but uh, God needs us to stretch and grow. And um, it is interesting that Luke's Gospel uh, mentions Herod for a moment. As Herod wanted to have his cake and eat it too. Herod wanted the easy button no matter what. And he just wanted to have that nepotistic uh, where he, he could get, he could rule and he could um, do whatever he wants. And so when Salome says that she liked the head of the Baptist, that was the daughter of Herodias, um, her, and you know Herodias says, "Well, you better do it." He felt justified in by doing by committing his sin. And but his voice did not die. John the Baptist's voice, preparing that way, pointing to Jesus. We know that. That witness, witness is central to our faith and living into that witness and being empowered even when we're not hearing it necessarily from the world around us to move forward, to be and do. Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s um, anniversary of his uh, sad passing, his death, will be coming up soon. And um, I, I love this one quote that I'm not going to remember exactly right, but he was saying that faith is like that first step when you can't see the stairs. And you've just got to take it. you got to take it. And um, this is what we should think about every single day, uh, being regenerated, remembering and growing. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Lord Jesus, uh, we thank you for the perfect example, the loving example that you uh, are to us still, st is that uh, still voice that is speaking in the silence of our hearts at times. And uh, even when we're, we're not really listening, we might be listening to the other guy. You are, you are speaking to us. Your Holy Spirit is shaping our hearts. And we are blessed, O oh Lord, by the inauguration of your ministry, which is celebrated today. Uh, our ongoing ministry in the world is uh, your body. Uh, in your most beautiful name, amen. Yeah, can I turn on the other camera here?